sound test. Is it clear? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you took this time and trouble to consolidate your thinking into a book. Yeah. So, I mean, you are a high functioning individual. You, you, all the while that we've been lamenting about COVID, you got to work and you made a book. It was really important for us to, to really take time, understand and, and really go back to the basic, really uh, take all the filters off and really go back to the basic in a sense of understanding how one could create a discourse around design, which is primarily about what it ought to be, you know, go back to the basic of a basic. And that is the basic of a basic is basically humanity, you know. And, and that was that was very primary for me personally, has always been actually. And, and off and on, I spoke about it. And, and I think it was time to articulate all those thoughts together. And, uh, and I'm really humble and really uh, honored to have all these really important thinkers like Johanny Palisma and uh, uh, Stefano Mazzano, who, whom I collaborated very closely early on. Uh, uh, they have been extremely generous and really took time to to really go deep into the issues we were talking about and engage with those issues and, and bring that conversation. And the question is very, very critical. I think anything we do has a relevance unless we talk about the context. Any change can only happen unless we at least talk the way the things are, even if we don't know how to solve them. That has always been my mindset. And I think we managed to articulate that not only through my voice, but all these number of people who are very senior people who feel the same and, and bring this conversation to the table. Yeah. What were the key things that you picked up and you were also surprised by as you received the feedback from, say, Arik or Stefano or Paula, etc.? Mm -hmm. In terms of making a monograph, the idea was there are a set of issues which I've been talking about internally in the studio that we wanted to map and understand and, and really bring that to conversation. You know, design touches so many grounds, actually, as you know, that that you talk about even the the, 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 the poetic nature of object because uh, there is certain kind of association with it. You know, I mean, there are possibilities and all those things. So there's a kind of cultural continuity or connection there. At the same time, there is there's a conversation around traditionalism, which really bogs down uh, the innovation, you know. So traditionalism, we have to cut out of the root, actually, you know. Then there is also a mono dialogue, almost design is synonymous with, allow me to say, uh, almost Eurocentric in some sense, you know, yeah. And, and I admire your work because you created another center, which is equally powerful, important, and created a dialogue which nobody can deny today after all these years. And, and I think we need these kind of conversations. And if we don't have those conversations, the simplistic, I, th I think the simplistic conclusions people tend to take, like uh, what happened with masses, is that almost all this brain power or creativity or intellectual work only comes from specific geography. I think that we need to hash it out. That is just not true. There's uh, plenty of creativity around the world. That's not the problem. One um, notion, of uh, idea which I've been working on for a long time is the idea of a social modernity. That modernity genuinely rooted in an understanding of a, of a human condition actually. And social here, I don't mean any, it has nothing to do with charity because the moment you use the word social, people tend to simplistically, um, let's say put in the category of a charity. It's really a vision that unless really, I mean, this pandemic is, a, is, a, is a really a perfect example Sadly, though, that we, unless we take care of all sections of society, nobody is safe, really. So this whole idea on which the, our, our entire systems are based, and I would say we, we, everybody used to think, hey, Scandinavia has a fantastic issues. They solved it. No, not really. Yeah. So if we, if we look from all these perspectives, the issues are really common. And I think going back to those sources of understanding, what is that social cohesion that design has a power to bring in is, has been the primary understanding. And all these issues, actually, we wanted to bring the conversation. Now, when bringing this conversation, the idea was not really bringing a rhetoric manner, trying to say this is good, this is bad, that, that, that. I think as a practicing uh, designer, for me, the, the examples of the work are the primary examples, you know? So it is not just talking rhetorically or theoretically about certain thing. 
but supporting that with a with a practice with a with example so how can you create a kind of social cohesion in a sense that the object facilitate a kind of a play which also is a work actually in in a sense because the teacher or the lady who's taking or a man who's taking care of the children has to to arrange the beds has to put the beds and it's a work you know so we made the choice of the material that the children themselves can can kind of help two children can stack each other out, make their bed or those kind of things but if you flip the bed you have a game on it and that automatically encourages people to kind of hey engage with it you know and the pragmatic example is you know you you we know you are the master of organizing big event you go for an event you have lots of events happening or you have a talk generally there are chairs which are stackable chair because you you stack them at the end of the day somebody has to to use the chair somebody has to arrange the chairs after the event happen how many times you seen in the world that the audience who came they take their chair and stack it back and i created object that literally happens without telling them actually you know and what happens is and this is a, a meander stool a stool which is stacks in a very modular manner and you can sit in a two positions you sit higher you sit lower when you are in the front and invariably i check this when the delegates from denmark as well as uh, uh, japan came to visit in the studio or people this object was used in berlin or here for the architecture uh, conversations automatically people take the object and place it back on the wall stack it back those who need they bring it and sit it down and then sit, and they use it for sitting and put it put it back now what i'm saying here is couple of different things one thing is this creates a kind of a play a social cohesion in a sense that if you ask a guest to hey you have to stack those chairs back you know what reaction will you will get from any part of the world any culture here automatically that ludic the playful action evokes within them actually you know now this kind of this kind of uh, let's say concern has always been back of my mind actually that how can you break these patterns like otherwise some poor guy or girl has to do the job and 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 make that happen now these are really i would say primary but important design objects for me and to bring this point of view of thinking if i talk to you on a, on a bigger scale one project was the social justice center uh, to design in in the city of delhi you know and delhi is a planned city the public institutions are designed in a way that the common man goes or a woman goes there he or she feels intimidated they don't feel they are invited what we created there is that there is no way one could create any kind of hierarchy you straight get anybody inside the building and you come in the central rotonda and you have access to the all the kind of departments and the places one need to go to get help or to do registration do all kind of things so that's a huge playground to create a social cohesion create a possibility that there is just no hierarchy you know design is not just to change behavior i think design is to rebuild the society in a true sense if we if we use design in a true sense in a humanistic sense in a in a kind of condition we are knowing the history we had knowing the troubles we had and knowing the the, the created problems we have you know i would say created problems most of them are uh, i think design is to rebuild the society really that's what i primarily believe